Despite all the craziness going on in today's world, we got you covered right here in terms of the entertainment providing you the hottest show on the streets, the best form of Alabama football news, notes, and information. What could I be referring to simply in my own words with yours truly, your man, Stephen M. Smith of Touchdown Alabama Magazine. I'm so happy to have each and every one of you guys tuning in to join us on a Friday, coming to you from Tuscaloosa, streaming this to you via YouTube. Speaking of YouTube, go ahead and hit the subscribe button, smash that thing right now, and turn on those notifications so that you can have the best in updates, analysis, coverage, and commentary on your Crimson Tide. But all the time that I get a chance to do this, I'm joined by the maestro, the man that stirs the drink in the production room, my man, brother john ivory john how you doing man on friday how you feeling man i'm feeling great man I'm ready for this show roll tight let's light the chat up man let's have a great show great show great conversation great dialogue and you can be a part of all of these great things by calling 205-448-1358 once again 205-448-1358 that number one more time 205-448-1358 1358 to let your voice, your thoughts, your opinions. This is your time, your show. But talk about your Alabama Crimson Time, Crimson Tide, excuse me, phone lines. They're open and flowing. You can also text with that number and leave a voicemail with that number. We're going to have a great show today as later on we're going to get a chance to sit down with the lead scouting and recruiting analyst for TDA, that being one Justin Smith to talk Alabama 2021 recruiting as that trail really starting to heat up as of late. But first thing we're going to get into will be a couple of updates. And the first one, shouts out to my man, former Alabama defensive back and the founder of Together Assisting People Tap Inc. out of Birmingham, my man Chris Rogers. Chris Rogers and the Tap family were able to get together and feed 10,000 families, over 200,000 pounds of food, but fed 10,000 families on Thursday in Birmingham and just despite the coronavirus pandemic that's been going around and uh, the fact that we now live in a world at a time where we have uh, people with no jobs, people with no means to make funds, we have people that are depending on uh, unemployment checks and stimulus checks to push through and get through but seeing Chris Rogers, the Tap family and along with though and along with that you had Leonard Stevens of step-by-step -step performance training out of Birmingham. All these guys coming together to supply 10,000 meals, feeding 10,000 families in the Birmingham area. So a big uh, thumbs up to, to Chris Rogers and Tap for getting that done for the community. Along with that, former Alabama and Oklahoma quarterback Jalen Hurts was the recipient of the Big 12 Male Athlete of the Year. Had a great career with the Crimson Tide. Hurts did. Had a solid career with the Oklahoma Sooners. And a guy that was selected number 53 overall in the NFL Draft by the Philadelphia Eagles. So kudos to Hurts in getting one more collegiate award, Big 12 Male Athlete of the Year, prior to starting his professional tenure with the Eagles. But... We now dive into the first topic here, people, of conversation, and I was going to do this topic regardless, but I wanted to provide a poll to kind of engage your thoughts, get your opinions, get your feel on uh, this topic that we're about to introduce here in the conversation. So fans, the last couple of days, I dropped two polls, right? So the first poll that was on the Twitter side, the at In My Own Words TDA, that's at In My Own Words TDA. If you're not following the Twitter page, we encourage you to do so to keep an update or to keep an eye on the content dropping there. But the last couple of days here, I put out two polls. The first one was, which team would serve as Alabama's trap game, right? Not necessarily a game that Alabama would lose, but if the Crimson Tide was to come out against this opponent and struggle, not take it seriously, you know, not have the attention to detail, not have the focus, come out there sort of kind of lazy, that team would have the ability to hang with Alabama, be physical with Alabama, push the Tide around, 
a little bit and uh, either mess around and somehow find a way to win and topple the Crimson Tide or at the very least, you know, wear it down mentally and physically enough to where even if the Tide was to escape with the win, the very next team on the schedule would have a better chance to take out Coach Saban and Alabama. And with 70% of the vote, it was 215 votes. Appreciate you guys for voting in. But with 70% of the vote, the team that would serve as the trap game for Alabama, Courtney, you, the Crimson Tide faithful out there, the Tennessee Volunteers with 70% of the vote. So I put off another poll along with that one. And so this one was, you know, which coach in the regular season which coach in the regular season for Alabama would be the one to challenge, give Coach Saban that friction, give Coach Saban that push, you know, really kind of frustrate the 68-year-old as he's going after national championship number seven to finally put him ahead or on top of the legendary Paul Bear Bryant. Which coach in Alabama's regular season would give Coach Saban that push, you know, that friction. And we had about 245 people to vote in that poll, as that poll still going on right now. Continue to vote on the, and in my own words, TDA, you know, Twitter account if you haven't done so. But with 32.5% of the vote right now, you guys have Kirby Smart of Georgia as the one that would give Nick Saban the most push, the most friction, the most challenge that would really give Saban that competition in the regular season. Behind Smart with 31.7% of the vote, there in lies one Jeremy Pruitt. And definitely want you know your thoughts on this topic, 205-448-1358, but I'm going to call in 205 448 And the reason why I brought this up was, for every national championship team, for every team pushing to win it all, you got to have that opposition that really challenges you, that really pushes you, that really provides the friction, the frustration that puts it on you, that really, you know, challenges or works the best out of you, so to speak. And so, as of right now, the coach that, and, and, and I'm doing this topic in terms of coaches on four different categories here. The categories are in terms of the coach that has the best talent on the roster, returning talent, you know, incoming freshmen, the coach that's got the best talent on the roster, number one. Number two, the coach that has the best atmosphere, whether Alabama has to travel on the road or whether, you know, if it's a home game inside Brian Denny, which coach brings that fan base that's rowdy, rambunctious, wild, crazy, that can come into Brian Denny, make some noise, stir some stuff up, you know, that type of deal. So that's number two. Number three, you know, which coach has the scheme, the strategy, if you will, that's not afraid to take shots, knowing that there's going to be some shots provided with there's going to be an opportunity to take some shots in the game, you know, against Alabama. So who would be that coach that would not be afraid to take some shots, you know, in a matchup against the tie? And then last but not least, which coach would have that mental fortitude, right? Because Saban prides himself on not allowing the opposition to break him mentally. He wants to have the mental edge over every coach over every opponent. So which coach would have the ability to break Saban's sort of mental edge and push through that and, and providing that challenge and providing that friction? So, but the first coach that, you know, everybody looks at right now to do this is Kirby Smart because Coach Smart would have uh, the, Coach Smart has the best talent on the roster, the best overall talent from top to bottom in terms of four and five stars. Now, this is more so unproven talent, but talent nonetheless. Kirby would have a talent. And as far as, you know, the atmosphere thing, uh, Georgia travels to the Crimson Tide this season. So, would the fan base be in effect that would travel with Coach Smart? Maybe, maybe not. We'll have to see. In terms of the tactics, Kirby will take some shots 
Will he take a lot of shots? You really don't know just due to, once again, that talent on the roster, unproven talent at this point but right now. In terms of mental fortitude, Kirby's got the mental fortitude, but after being bested by saving twice, we're talking about in the SEC Championship game in 2018 and for the National Championship game, the 2017 season, the 2018 game being, you know, punked out by two backup quarterbacks. We'll see. Has that mental fortitude grown some in terms of Kirby Smart. When folks discuss one Jeremy Pruitt here, Coach Pruitt is, is interesting. Well, Coach Pruitt is an interesting guy. But before we get to Coach Pruitt, Ed Ogeron would be the second name here. And Coach O, kind of like Pruitt in a sense of, even though for the first time in you know, eight to nine years, LSU got its first win over Alabama. For the first time since 2007, LSU got its first national championship. For the first time since 2011, LSU got its first conference title in the SEC. But much like Pruitt, you know, LSU returned some guys, but unproven talent in some spots unproven talent in terms of in terms of quarterback you've got some unproven talent at the running back room now you got some guys that play but they're not Clyde Edwards Elair that was a 1400 yard back a season ago they've got a proven wide receiver in Jamar Chase I give it that they've got a proven wide receiver in Terrace Marshall I give it that but there are also some areas where the LSU Tigers are unproven in I know Coach O is going to have the atmosphere in terms of Tiger Stadium, Baton Rouge, Louisiana, Death Valley, but Coach Saban has had much success in Baton Rouge here in the last few years. So in terms of taking shots against the Crimson Tide without having Joe Brady as the passing game coordinator and without having Dave Aranda as the defensive coordinator, that becomes a serious question because Brady felt free to take shots. He had confidence in his own scheme. He had a lot of confidence in Joe Burrow. Of course, Burrow had confidence in himself. So in terms of taking those shots to get Saban and going on the attack, we'll have to see about that. Not sure they'll be able to have that with the new coordinators in here. And as far as the mental fortitude, Edo, can he be able to crack Saban's mental process? Well, that remains to be seen, of course, this season as well. But the coach everybody's talking about right now is Jeremy Pruitt. This is the coach everybody's talking about. Stephen Pruitt's doing awesome on the recruiting trail, and he is. Stephen Pruitt's getting all these recruits in. He's getting all these playmakers in. He's getting all these guys in. Tennessee is back. Tennessee is the real deal. Tennessee is the team. Everybody's talking about right now. You, the fans, going back to the poll, had Tennessee with 70% of the vote as the trap game here for you know, Alabama. Now, remember, Peerless Price, former you know, wide receiver for the Vols in the mid to late 1990s, part of that 1998 national championship team, he talked about how, give it two years, Vol Nation will be on top. You have a lot of volunteer fans going, you know, peerless, I like you, man. I appreciate you, bro. I respect you for what you did for the football program. But bump that two years. If we get everything in pocket now, if everything falls right now, we get some balls to bounce our way now. We're, we're looking at now being Tennessee's time. But I see two problems with Tennessee, both on offense. Number one, who is going to be the quarterback for the Volunteers? And then number two, will they have the, the firepower at wide receiver, seeing how Juwan Jennings is gone, Dominic Wood Anderson's gone, uh, Tyler Bird is gone, and the only one it returns is Josh Palmer. Tennessee's going to have to play a lot of freshmen at receiver. Now, defensively, they got some horses. They've got some guys led by Henry Toa Toa at linebacker but offensively gotta see what Tennessee has and then last but not least this will be my guy Lane Kiffin right here I think Kiffin is the one that's gonna provide the friction and here's why Kiffin is back in the SEC for a reason in Kiffin's mind he's thinking if Coach Saban would have let me coach that national championship game against Clemson, I would have another ring on my hand right now because I was not allowed to coach that game. I feel like Coach Saban took a ring from me or didn't allow me to try to get another one. So 
Kiffin at times can hold a grudge. And I feel like, you no, know, he's the guy that's got talent back on the roster offensively. We're gonna we have to see what they have on defense at Ole Miss, but offensively they got the talent. He's gonna take shots. He's got a crazy atmosphere in the Grove, and he's got his own type of mental fortitude. But folks, we're gonna take our first break here on the show. When we come back, we unpack your thoughts, your questions, your concerns, your thoughts here. Who would you have as the coach on the regular season schedule to give saving that push? that friction, that challenge. We'll touch it up after this. Every sports fan deserves the proper representation. Wit Will Sports introduces to you the title towel. Wave that title towel in the air like you just don't care in support of Nick Saban and the Alabama Crimson Tide. Only $9.99 and it lasts a lifetime. Head on over to WitWillSports.com and get your title towel today. Touchdown Alabama Magazine is Alabama football's premier publication. A subscription to Touchdown Alabama Magazine is the perfect gift for any Alabama fan. For exclusive news and information, recruiting updates, a free annual print magazine, and more, go to touchdownalabama.com and click join. Only $5.95 per month or pay $49.95 for a full year subscription. That's a saving of almost $22. Make sure to subscribe before it's too late and get our new freshly printed end of the year magazine issue. Go to Touchdown Alabama. Alabama.com today and roll tide. We're rocking and rolling, folks, on a Friday on the hottest show in the streets in my own words with yours truly, Stephen Smith of Touchdown Alabama Magazine. Appreciate everybody for jumping on listening to us on today. It's your time, Crimson Tide Nation, 205-448-1358. Then let your voice be heard on the show. Phone lines open and flowing, 205-448-1358. The number one more time, 205 448 1358 and don't forget to hit that subscribe button and turn on those notifications so that way you can have all the alerts updates analysis material on your crimson tide but we take our first caller on a friday it's wayland wayland what's going on brother it's friday and tda and what more do i need to say how's everybody doing down at tda today steven Everybody's doing well, man. Coming up in the next segment, we're going to have Justin Smith laying down Malahoe in recruiting, man. Everybody get ready for that. Justin can lay it on there smooth as butter, man. He knows just exactly what's going on. I, I like your polls going on there. I just uh, I feel like this season may turn around, and, and we may have a team like the, the, the 92 season uh, go back to – uh, a good offense, some passing, run the ball, but have a dominant defense. I don't really see anybody giving Alabama that hard a problem this year. That's why I didn't vote in the poll. I just don't feel like it's. Uh, I just don't feel like it's going uh, going to happen, Stephen. I got a chance to talk to a guy the the other day, you know, Wayland, who is very much so deeply, you know, involved with this Alabama football program. What I got from, you know, a buddy of mine was he looks at this 2020 Alabama defense with potential of it being like the 2016 group. And his words were verbatim, Stephen, I've been around a lot of defenses. I've been around a lot of teams. I've been around quite a few programs in college football. But this 2020 defense, in terms of its potential, the players on it, the experience on it, the talent on it, and the overall hunger it has, this 2020 group has the potential. Can it live up to it? That's the thing that Bama Nation hopes. But the potential of this group, 2016 defense. Well, yeah, 2016 defense was awesome. There's been a lot of good defense. There's no doubt about it. You know, uh, that's what I'm looking at. You know, uh, 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 just a consistent offense that needs to score when it needs to, but a defense, when you have a defense like that, you just don't have to score a whole lot, you know. And uh, I don't uh, – I had a poem that uh, – I don't know what happened. It came to me so fast there, you know. It, uh, I didn't even rewrite it. It looks like a bunch of mumbo-jumbo, but I can read it, and it goes along hey, with what's As long as you can read it, Wayne, and we fine. <laughs> <laughs> well, sometimes I don't rewrite them. I mean, they just – sometimes it comes so fast, it's like writing a song, you know. You just – 
you just have to throw it down there and it, it's just it's gibberish but it's shorthand but we're going to do the best we can here with this one and we got our glasses glued on our head so they don't fall off so uh we're going to uh, hope everybody out there at tda a good weekend everybody's on the chat line hello and uh I uh, appreciate everybody for the thanks on the poems that we do and, let, and y'all letting me do them. So we're going to do this and let somebody else get in, the, uh, get in the queue. It's called Soil Little Kindness. While we're walking through the garden, it's pretty easy to see that love and understanding starts right here with you and me. A little respect and compassion goes a long, long way. What's wrong with helping a perfect stranger have a better day? Sow a little kindness, reap a little love. All of our children come from up above. Help to make tomorrow what dreamings were of sowing a little kindness and reaping a little love. So that's that one came to me pretty quick there, Stephen. So I'll sign off with that and hope everybody has a good weekend. And uh, if the Lord's willing, we'll be back on Monday. How's that sound? Sounds great, my man. Hey, be good, Wayman. All right, y'all have a good weekend. Bye-bye. No interesting poem there from Wangan coming at it from a really cool respect to everybody. Be one with be one with mankind type of poem right there. I, you know, hey, I, Way- I, Waylon needs to deal with Hallmark like ASAP. I, <laughs> you know what, John? Put that on the poll. Waylon needs to deal with Hallmark. We're we, we gonna get that done. We're gonna get that done. Got, got to get that deal in for with, with the Hallmark Network, but we had another poll actually, Joe. We had two. We had two other polls that I also put up in honor of the potential freshman wide receiver that could break out. As I mentioned on Wednesday's show, it's always been true freshmen that have frustrated opposing defenses for Alabama because you feel like. The opposition feels like we got the tie bottled up. They don't have a lot of playmakers. We can deal with the other receivers. We got enough power in the secondary to hold those guys. And then out of nowhere, you know, Coach Saban signs a freshman, and that freshman just throws a monkey wrench into everything, whether it was Amari Cooper in 2012 or Calvin Ridley 2015 or the trifecta of Jerry Judy, Henry Ruggs, Devontae Smith 2017 or you know, Jalen Waddle 2018. There's always been some type of monkey wrench thrown into the plan of opposing defenses. And for this class here 2020, there are three guys. You look at Javon Baker. You look at Trayshawn Holden. We also have Thayu Jones-Bell, and the question I had for, for Wednesday's show was, who would be that guy to kind of mess up the plans for the opposition? So we had two polls here. We had a poll on the Twitter account, and we had a poll on the, uh, the YouTube account. So on the Twitter account, Thayu Jones-Bell won the poll. How much, how, much, how much percent of the vote did Bell have there, J.P.? 41% of the vote. So Thayu Jones Bell won the Twitter poll with 41% of the vote. The YouTube vote, it was actually Trayshawn Holden who won with 41% of the vote. Javon Baker had 31% and Jones Bell number three at 28%. So one of these three has the opportunity to break out, you know, as a true freshman. To me, I gave the nod to Baker, just seeing how uh, this young man, six foot three, he takes pride in just embarrassing opposing defensive backs. I know our own Justin Smith recently put out a story on the young man diving into you know that that enjoyment for running precise routes, uh, boxing out you know cornerbacks and safeties, attacking the ball at its highest point. You know he wants to be out there. He wants to be a grade A type of, of specimen on the field. And then you've got a Trayshawn Holden from California who's also 6'3", and there was a clip of him running plays in the secondary as, as a DB. And while you know Saban likes to cross-train a lot of his players in the event of if somebody gets hurt, we have a guy that can you know come in and play that spot because – here at Alabama, you know, our coaching staff likes to cross-train a bunch of players. But nine times out of ten, I still see Holden as being a wide receiver versus a defensive back. But my thought was Javon Baker, and hopefully Baker has a chance to show up and show out making an impact in the upcoming season. But 
It's fun, though. It's fun, though. We, we appreciate everybody for checking out, you know, both of those polls on YouTube and Twitter, just trying to engage you, the fans, give you something to think about, wanting to poke your mind, poke your interest, and things of that nature. But we're going to take... Also, be sure, before we take our next break here, be sure to follow the Twitter account at In My Own Words TDA. That's at In My Own Words TDA on Twitter, at In My Own Words TDA, as we're posting new snippets, posting new uh, posts, posting new things of content to get you guys to see, be a part of, participate, interact, because you being the Alabama football faithful, it's the fans that drive the content because you guys love Alabama football like none other. But we take another break here on the show. Continue to light up the YouTube chat line and the call-in, 205-448-1358. Upon our return, we sit down with the man, the myth, the bona fide legend, Justin Smith of Touchdown Alabama Magazine to talk recruiting right after this. If you want delicious homestyle cooking, sushi, and hibachi, check out Otoro Hibachi in the University Mall in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. At home and you can't get away from the TV because the Crimson Tide is about to score? Don't worry. Delivery is also available through Waiter and Crimson To Go. That's Otoro Hibachi in the University Mall in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. And make sure you let them know the good folks at Touchdown Alabama sent you. Touchdown Alabama Magazine is Alabama football's premier publication. A subscription to Touchdown Alabama Magazine is the perfect gift for any Alabama fan. For exclusive news and information, recruiting updates, a free annual print magazine, and more, go to touchdownalabama.com and click join. Only $5.95 per month or pay $49.95 for a full year subscription. That's a saving of almost $22. Make sure to subscribe before it's too late and get our new freshly printed end of the year magazine issue. Go to touchdown Alabama.com today and roll tide. We're back into the action, folks. In my own words, on the Friday with yours truly, Stephen M. Smith of Touchdown Alabama Magazine. And folks, the moment you've all been waiting for, we got the man, the myth, the bona fide legend. It's a family affair. We got Justin Smith in the building, the lead scout and recruiting analyst for TDA. Folks, I promise you, he's got a pillow, a blanket, <laughs> a hammock, and every recruit's house. This man is on the road doing this thing here. Justin, as always, man, it's happy to have you back in here, man. man as always, I'm always happy to join you on In My Own Words. So, uh, so, Justin, first things first here, big commitment that happened on Thursday. Ian Jackson, the four-star outside linebacker out of Prattfield High School here in Alabama, gave his yes to the Crimson Tide, gave his yes to Nick Saban, a big player, in a very uh, priority position here. I remember when uh, – uh, Pratt Bills head coach Caleb Ross, he talked about how good Ty Pirine was when Pirine came to Pratt Bill, came to Alabama from Pratt Bill as a walk-on punter. Talk to me about Ian Jackson. How major was this commitment? I think this commitment was a huge commitment for Alabama for several different reasons. I know a lot of recruiting sites have him listed as more of a lower-ranking um, four-star recruit, but that's, that, that does not describe this kid's game. This is a very versatile athlete. There's not too many players in the 2021 recruiting class who can play at all three levels on the defensive side of the football. When you look at outside linebacker, inside linebacker, and possibly defensive back. And when I got a chance to talk with Caleb Ross, the head coach of Prattville High School, he actually told me that Ian Jackson started off at the safety position during his 10th grade year he played his whole entire whole entire sophomore year at the safety position he was a very aggressive player but as the coaching staff started to see his body grow they wanted to bring him closer to the line of scrimmage and they put him at outside linebacker and he told me when they put him at outside linebacker he just flourished especially rushing off the edge of course they taught him a couple of things but he was just doing some things natural so he knew he had a, a, a bit more edge to him that's something he said to me because when he said that when you have a guy outside linebacker when you're rushing from the edge you got to have something he said Ian has that something he said if he continues to grow continues to gain more weight and he possibly get to 215 or possibly 230 
during his college career, this is a guy who could possibly easily play inside linebacker at the next level. He doesn't really see him as a Mike linebacker, but possibly at a Sam Wheel position. So this is a kid who's one of the more versatile kids in the 2021 recruiting class. Look for him to make a jump on several recruiting rankings um, as the season goes on for him during now, the senior season. Now for Alabama fans, Justin, people are already kind of starting to compare him to Mac Wilson. <laughs> you know, Mac came in – from Carver High School in Montgomery. And so when Matt came in, a guy that really compact frame, tall guy, but loved to hit, loved to tackle, loved to dissect plays, just a pure, pure athlete. Do you see some similarities between Jackson to a Mac Wilson? Yeah, I see some similarities. I think the biggest similarity is his ability to defend the pass at the linebacker position. In my personal opinion, I think Mac Wilson was one of the best coverage linebackers that Saban Very ever true. had when Very it comes true. to coverage. He probably was out of place on some different plays, but I think when it comes to his pass coverage, that was one of the biggest scrimps in his game. I think Ian Jackson brings that to the table. Very versatile kid. I think he really is comfortable defending the pass from the linebacker position. Folks, if you're just tuning in to In My Own Words, yours truly, Stephen M. Smith of Touchdown Alabama Magazine. We're right here with Justin Smith, the lead scouting and recruiting analyst for TDA, talking 2021 recruiting for Alabama. Justin, along with Ian Jackson, there's been a lot of young men putting up their top four list uh, for schools, whether it's the Brockemeyer twins, whether it's a couple of wide receivers. There's just so many guys that are putting in these top four lists. Uh, Alabama really trying to push more young men to commit. Just seeing how the August is already a recruiting dead period. Yeah. They've pushed some stuff back even through July. So who could be the next guys that you could see committing here in terms of you know, these top four lists really starting to heat up? Well, when it comes to the top four lists, I know a couple of guys who released him was James Brockermeyer, the first guy, the four-star offensive lineman. Of course, Alabama was, is recruiting him and his brother, Tommy Brockermeyer, the five-star offensive lineman. He did release that top four and included Alabama. I think that really paints the picture of who is still in the mix. Of course, his top four list is similar to his brother's um, top four list at the moment. They have the same schools. They are still considering the same schools. And, of course, a commitment for them could come at any time because when I got a chance to talk with the dad, Blake Brockermeyer, he did say that they feel comfortable enough that they do not take any more visits that they feel comfortable with the visits they, that they have taken with the schools they are considering they are confident that they can make the right choice based off their visits and their relationship with the coaching staff that, that both of those guys are considering Alabama was also in the final four for a four-star wide receiver out of Louisiana Brian Thomas Jr. a 6'4 wide receiver a guy with a long frame a very aggressive wide receiver who could possibly play two sports at the next level basketball and football several schools have offered him that opportunity of course Alabama has not done so yet but they have shown that they are willing to do that when you look at guys like Terry Arnold and also five-star athlete JaQuincy McKinstry so Alabama was included in his final four it was also included in a final four released by Troy Franklin a four-star wide receiver out of California I think that is a battle Alabama is in most definitely they are still considering him he is still considering Alabama but I think that that battle is going to come down to Alabama getting him on campus especially with them being from being from California getting getting him on campus to experience what Tuscaloosa is all about I think it's going to be vital for Alabama in terms of those guys who are still considering Alabama that released their they released their final four recently now where is the Crimson Tide in terms of Tim in terms of Tim Kennan where is Tim Kennan in terms of is he close to making a commitment is he almost there I know Bama fans are excited about him as well so where are we in terms of a potential commitment from Tim Kennan well Tim Kennan of course is the four star defensive tackle out of Ramsey High School in Birmingham Alabama this is a kid whose commitment is going to go very slow as he said multiple times he wants to wait all the way to National Signing Day but Alabama so basically he wants to give people a heart attack <laughs> yeah he he wants to wait till National Signing Day. He has said that on multiple occasions. He wants to sign and make his commitment on that same day during the December signing period, the early signing period, as we do have two signing periods. But when you look at Tim Kennan, this is a guy who's still considering all of his options. I think his recruitment is very open. I think he released like a top 10. I think it was higher than that. A very top, a very high top school list. So he's still considering a lot of schools. His recruitment is still open when you look at Tim Kennan. I actually talked to his dad recently, and he was like, yo, we're just doing a lot of work. 
working out and he actually sent me a video of him like just chilling in the front seat of his truck and Tim Kennan is pushing the truck working out so he's definitely working and still just working through his recruitment process folks if you're just tuning into the show here in my own words on a Friday we got the man the myth the legend on the ground in recruiting Justin Smith of TDA talking Crimson Tide for the 2021 class and we actually had a question here uh, Justin from one Samuel William Wilkinson one of our faithful <laughs> listeners here on the show and you know Samuel wanted to know about any potential quarterback prospects any potential offensive line prospects targets that you know the Crimson Tide Alabama is looking at we all know that Nick Saban likes to recruit at least one quarterback per class he's he's hard on getting those offensive linemen just seeing how you the potential of you losing Landon Dickerson uh uh Alex Netherwood and also Deontay Brown after this season. Where are we with potential for quarterbacks and offensive line targets? Okay, when it, when it comes to the quarterback position, of course, Alabama is still recruiting four-star quarterback Miller Moss out of California. He's still considering Alabama along with USC, UCLA, and also LSU. So he's still considering a lot of different schools, a top four schools at the moment, it looks like. But when you look at Alabama and their push for Miller Moss, it still look to be in the mix as well as being in the mix for Jalen Miro. I know he's committed to Texas. I think there's going to be a hard push for Alabama to possibly get him, but I think there are still a couple options outside those guys. You look at the son of Deion Sanders, Shadir Sanders. He does have an offer from Alabama. Alabama had been in contact with him, so that is another guy to look at, but I think some more names could emerge if those guys decide to go up another way but as far as the offensive line position Alabama is still pushing for the Brock and Meyer twins of course they were pushing for Jaden Roberts I think they're still going to push for him even though he's committed to Auburn I think they could possibly still push for him down the line if they see fit they could possibly fit that class another guy we'll look out for is JC Latham a IMG Academy product I think Alabama's really pushed made a push for him lately um, because I actually talked to him at the Under Armour Future 50 media day event. He said Alabama had not really been in too much contact with him at that point, but I think they have picked up contact as of late. I'll put J.C. Latham in that conversation. Alabama is also still pushing for five sophomore linemen. Amarius Mills possibly one of the top offensive linemen targets in the 2021 recruiting class as well. So there's still a lot of Offensive alignment targets, and I think another name could possibly emerge in the quarterback race if Alabama cannot land Miller Moss or possibly flip Jalen Miro. Now, an, an, another big one here, another big one here, Justin, in terms of Jazz Alabama in trying to push to get more recruits here. What's kind of the hardest part of that? Because I know the young men would have loved to have been on the campus. Can't do that because, of course, during the coronavirus pandemic. But aside from, you know, the Zoom calls, aside from trying to, to get these guys to commit, what's kind of been you know, the hardest part for Alabama to really, you know, hit that jolt and put and get 10 and 15 and 20 guys, you know, rolling in this class? I know it's on, you know, six, which is good from where it once was because it was on one with Deontay, you know, long awesome for the longest of time but what's been the toughest part of getting these young men to quickly commit as fast as possible well I think it's a bit of a a lot of different reasons when you look at or look at it that way of course I think Alabama wanted to take a little bit of a slower approach evaluate some guys that are really looking forward to getting guys on summer getting guys right. on campus this summer for those camps I think that's one of the biggest hindrance so Alabama has to use huddle film you have to have to reach out to coaches that you that you trust on the recruiting for a coach that you have built a relationship with you have, you have to reach out to those coaches and evaluate guys through coaches a lot of times I think the evaluation plays a part in and of course you have to get those guys on campus it's hard to sell a family on your program if they've never stepped foot on campus of course it may be easy to sell a high school kid on it but you got to sell mom and dad on University of Alabama so I think it's a lot of different obstacles in Alabama's way especially when you offer kids that you was hoping to get on campus possibly for the first time during the spring and summer and now you're not going to possibly get them on campus before they make their decision decisions I think that's kind of a hard sell especially trying to sell mom and dad on your program virtually totally not getting a chance to see you face to face to have the in-person contact he's Justin Smith ladies and gentlemen the lead scouting and recruiting analyst for touchdown Alabama magazine join us to talk Bama recruiting for 2021 give this young man a follow he <laughs> is on the ground I'm telling you he's got the pillow he's got the hammock he's got the sleep master bed he is in every <laughs> recruits home doing that job building these relationships with these young men crimson tide landing one in Jackson on Thursday the four-star from Prattville High 
high school and looking to get more as this class, as the cycle continues. We're going to take another break here, folks, on the show, but don't touch that dial. Upon our return, we unpack more of your phone calls, thoughts, tweets, text messages, and concerns after this. T-Town Menswear in the University Mall in Tuscaloosa. Touchdown Alabama Magazine is Alabama football's premier publication. A subscription to Touchdown Alabama Magazine is the perfect gift for any Alabama fan. For exclusive news and information, recruiting updates, a free annual print magazine, and more, go to touchdownalabama.com and click join. Only $5.95 per month or pay $49.95 for a full year subscription. That's a saving of almost $22. Make sure to subscribe before it's too late and get our new freshly printed end of the year magazine issue. Go to Touchdown Alabama. Alabama.com today and roll tide. Back in from the break, folks, on the hottest show in the streets, the best form of Crimson Tide football. News, notes, and information in my own words with yours truly, Stephen Smith of Touchdown Alabama Magazine. It's always a great time to get a chance to speak with Justin Smith in recruiting, and he, as he does, an unbelievable job. But as always, folks, this is your time, 205 205- 448-1358. The number to call in and let your voice be heard on the show. 205-448-1358. And that number one more time. 205-448-1358. Definitely want to hear from you, your opinions, your thoughts. What are you feeling when it comes to... Alabama football, be sure to text with that number, also leave a voicemail with that number, and if you haven't done so, hit that subscribe button and turn on those notifications so that you can have all the updates, alerts, and analysis on the Crimson Tide. But, still sticking here with the topic of wide receivers as you are getting your thoughts together, and going back to a a uh, recent discussion of who could be the number three breakout guy at that position behind Devontae Smith and Jalen Waddle. I know we've gotten a chance to look at John Mechie pulling him out as a highlight, pulling Xavier Williams out as a potential dark horse highlight. I know I've even pulled out one Terrell Shavers at 6'6", but we have yet to discuss Slade Bolden. We have yet to discuss the young man from Louisiana. We have yet to discuss the 2017 Gatorade Player of the Year out of the state of Louisiana in one Slade Bolden and uh, from West Monroe High School and a guy that can play so many different positions. Played quarterback in high school, played wide receiver in high school, played defensive back in high school, handled some special teams in high school. He was that definition of the do-it-all player, and the Tide has had quite a few of those in its history, especially under Nick Saban when you talk, you know, guys like uh, Blake Sims, just off the top of my head. Blake Sims was a do-it-all type guy. Uh, Marquise Mays, to some extent, was a do-it-all type guy. You know, Trayvon Diggs was kind of a do-it-all versatile type guy despite him settling into being totally a defensive back 2018 and 2019 but you know Slade Bolden a do-it-all guy for Alabama can play quarterback can play wide receiver really good on special teams of course we saw this past season him operating out of the wildcat or Slade cat formation as you know people like to call it in Tuscaloosa along with that he you know threw a touchdown pass it, it quarterback spot and you know, caught a couple of passes this past season as well at wide receiver. Could he be the guy? Could he somehow be the number three guy in the rotation? And um, I know this past year when I got a chance to speak with players, conversate with players, they talked about how he reminds them of one Julian Edelman of the New England Patriots. And it's kind of interesting they bring this up because Jules, Jules had the same trajectory, career pattern as Bolden. 
you know, Jules in high school in California played quarterback and, and, and receiver, mostly quarterback. He got to college at Kent State. You know, he played quarterback there predominantly. And then he gets to the NFL with the New England Patriots, and he has to switch to, you know, slot receiver, which he carved out an incredible career, you know, a multi Super Bowl champion, and at times when Bill Belichick feels like, okay, Jules, we're going to let you, you know, take the direct snap at quarterback, or we're going to run a trick play with you and have you throw the ball you know, for a touchdown, he reverts back to those old skills that he had in high school and college and, uh, you know, bowled in kind of the same way. Now, the only question, the only thought I have about him running the, um, the Wildcat is with the tie bringing in one Christian Story, the four-star out of Lynette High School here in Alabama, you know, a 1A school, the player of the year, you know, for that, you know, 2019 season, and a young man that broke a whole bunch of records, played quarterback in high school, you know, played on defense as well, a guy that his father trains him how to focus on being a quarterback, the young man at 6'2", or 6'1", 6'2", despite the fact that Saban wants to have a story more so as a safety, a guy in the secondary, you almost have to wonder, with his experience, with his knowledge already, you know, operating from under center and operating from the shotgun, you know, as a signal caller, with him in Alabama, do you more so go with him running that wildcat factor or do you more so go with Slay Bolden running that factor? So that's kind of maybe the only question, the only sort of hint of doubt that I may have just with that part of the game. But just in terms of Bolden and being a just full-on receiver, he's got the hands, he's got, you know, Pretty good route running. He's got speed, uh, kind of a more so possession type guy to where if you need to pick up, you know, a third and six, he can run the route, stop, get in the hole of his own, catch the ball, make a play on a third down. If you need it to, you know, have a play where you're running a drag route or you're running a, like, like a quick kind of slant pattern or maybe a bang eight post route, just little small different routes to get him going because, like I said, he is shifty. He is elusive. He does have strong hands. He can run pretty clean pretty precise routes and definitely want to highlight him since we already you know or since I already have kind of touched on the John Mechies touched on the Terrell Shavers touched on the Xavier Williams we've looked at some of the uh the freshmen but Slay Bolden would be a, an interesting pick there can he find a way can he plug his way into being the number three guy just a young man who was the former Gatorade player of the year for the state of Louisiana. But we take another break here on the show. Folks, don't touch that dial. Continue to light up the YouTube chat line. Light up the phones, 205-448-1358. Want to hear from you. Want to hear your thoughts, 205-448-1358. Upon our return, we dive into one, LeBron Ray. People talk about Dylan Moses and other guys returning from injury. Not much conversation on one LeBron Ray. We'll touch on what it means for the Tide to have him back after this. If you're an avid Alabama Crimson Tide fan and you love to flaunt it, then show your Alabama Crimson Tide support by grabbing the Alabama sneakers. They feature bold Crimson Tide graphics, so no one will be able to question where your allegiance lies. When you add these sweet sneakers to your Alabama Crimson Tide collection, go to stsfootwear.com and use the code TDALABAMA for $15 off your purchase. That's code TDALABAMA for $15 off your purchase. Go to stsfootwear.com and get your Alabama sneakers today. Touchdown Alabama Magazine is Alabama football's premier publication. A subscription to Touchdown Alabama Magazine is the perfect gift for any Alabama fan. For exclusive news and information, recruiting updates, a free annual print magazine, and more, go to touchdownalabama.com and click join. Only $5.95 per month or pay $49.95 for a full year subscription. That's a saving of almost $22. Make sure to subscribe before it's too late and get our new freshly printed end of the year magazine issue. Go to touchdown alabama.com today and roll tide all right ladies and gentlemen 
Back in from the break here on In My Own Words, hottest form of Crimson Tide football news, notes, and information on a Friday. I appreciate everybody for jumping into that YouTube chat line and checking us out here on today. We look at one LeBron Ray on the defensive line here for Alabama. And quite naturally, when you talk to you know fans, you talk to people that you know they uh, look at Alabama football like looking at their next breath. You gotta have it. You gotta have it. You gotta have it. Well, in discussions with of Tide fans, the most important player or the important most important injured defensive player coming back. Of course, it's Dylan Moses. Everybody excited to have Moses back. If you just post people around, you know, Tuscaloosa and surrounding areas, it's Dylan's back. You know, Alabama's going to finally have the defense that it was it supposed to have had, you know, a season ago. So Dylan would be the main guy. Behind Dylan, you would have people excited to see Joshua McMillan back. I mean, McMillan taught Moses the defense. People felt like, You know, last year was going to be his first year actually starting, actually being like a main key cog, key contributor, you know, on the football team until he had a knee injury in a preseason scrimmage. So folks will throw some love McMillan's way. And for number three, you would have guys happy to see DJ Dale back. I mean, DJ Dale had a good freshman year, and then he got hurt, you know, hurt his foot, you know, hurt his uh, knee, excuse me, not a part of the season. And, you know, people are like, well, no, Dale's back, no sophomore year. Let's see what he can provide. And, and all three of those guys are important, but people lose sight on LeBron Ray's back, too. A lot of people lose sight on Le- LeBron Ray at 6'5", 292 pounds, the red shirt junior out of James Clemens High School in the north, you know, Alabama, you know, the Madison area. You know, this is a young man that when he came to the Crimson Tide, in 2017 this was a five star this was a bona fide five star and I remember speaking about about a year ago to Rudy Griffin former Alabama defensive lineman Rudy Griffin who is now the head coach at uh, Bessemer City High School and coach Griffin was talking with me about how when he was the defensive coordinator and defensive line coach at Hewitt Trustville they took on James Clemens quite a bit and one of the best battles was Pierce Quick versus uh, LeBron Ray and that was war in the trenches there were moments where Pierce Quick got the better of LeBron Ray there were moments where LeBron Ray Ray got the better of Pierce Quick and there was about according to Coach Griffin there were some serious moments where Ray had big time pass rush moves putting them on quick and uh you know, getting to the quarterback, and, and he kind of looked like Terrell Suggs out there. That's the guy that really Garrett LeBron Ray too, NFL legend, NFL big time pass rusher Terrell Suggs. And uh, when Ray, you know, first got to Alabama, you know, his freshman year, he showed some big flashes. I mean, had two, he had, he had a couple of sacks, a couple of tackles for loss. Things were starting to trend upward for him as he was a part of that team that you know, won the national championship in 2017 but suffered from you know a foot injury. And then he came back his sophomore year and really came up some. 39 tackles, you know, five and a half tackles for loss, numbers creeping up there, two and a half sacks, two pass breakups, two quarterback hurries, but still had the case of, you know, the medical mishaps, the medical yips, you know, the foot injury got to him again. And then this past year, you know, had the lower, you know, leg injury. It was probably at the foot again, but it was, you know, looked at as a lower leg injury. He played through the first three games, got hurt against South Carolina, had nine tackles, one and a half tackles for loss, a sack, and a forced fumble. So despite the injuries and the seasons he's played in, we're looking at 53 tackles, you know, nine and a half tackles for loss, four and a half sacks, two pass breakups, two quarterback hurries, and one forced fumble. And prior to the injuries kind of coming in here, a lot of people felt like, you know, maybe LeBron Ray is that next defensive lineman, that next major pass rush, that next kind of first-round pick type guy. Some people still looked at, you know, Raekwon Davis as that guy, but others was like, Raekwon, eh, maybe, kind of, sort of, nah. I'm going to go with Brian Ray, you know, as that next guy. And, of course, 
the injuries to Ray have forced Christian Barmore to the forefront as now everybody's talking about Barmore as being the most exciting, energetic, tough, determined, passionate, elevated, like everyone's looking at Christian Barmore like this is the guy, like this is the one, like this right here is the second comment of Quentin Williams, this right here is the second comment of Sean Robinson, this right here is the second comment of Jonathan Allen, though I don't think Christian Barmore has that military mindset that Jonathan Allen was, because Allen was kind of crazy, Jonathan Allen was that dude that would be in the press conference room and folks were like, well Jonathan Allen, I, I just, I, other defenses can't do this. Other defenses can't do this. I mean, other defenses, they ain't Alabama, are they? Alabama does. Alabama can do this. Alabama can light you up. We Alabama. We ain't them. Like, Jonathan Allen would rip people. <laughs> he would rip reporters. Like, he would have just the straightest face and look at the camera. Alabama does. Deal with it. So I don't know if Christian Barmore has that military type of mindset that Allen does. Maybe he does, but everybody's looking at Christian Barmore now as the man, and rightfully so, in limited action. He had big production, and he's looking to have even more production this season, but I bring up LeBron Ray just due to, you know, with him back, Raekwon Davis out, you have a LeBron Ray, somebody that has the experience, somebody that kind of has that hunger, somebody that got a chance to watch, right, from the outside looking in on, okay, I see what happens to this team when Alabama doesn't pay attention to detail. I see what happens to the team when the players don't listen to Coach Saban. I see what happens to the team when, you know, we don't have discipline. I see what happens to the team when we are not playing the way we're supposed to play. And what happens is Alabama loses football games. And when Alabama loses football games, it's a snowball effect, right? It hurts the coaches. It hurts the players. It hurts the fans because everybody is so much invested. Everybody is dialed in. Everybody you know, looks at Alabama football, there are so many people that go, well, it doesn't matter what's going on wrong in my life as long as I've got Alabama football. I'm good. I'm Gucci. I'm fine. You know, Alabama football is keeping this thing going. So, Brian Ray got a chance to see that sort of firsthand last season. And with him back at the defensive end position, He's got the pass rush moves. He's got the ability to affect the quarterback. He's got the ability to stuff the run. He, he, he's got the ability to aggravate, aggravate guys. And, and even though he might not be the biggest talker, LeBron Ray kind of give, gives you that look. And the reporters, he kind of gave us that look from time to time last year in interviews. LeBron Ray's got a look. He, 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 he don't have to talk. He, he give you that look. You, you like, you know what? I'm going to shut up, LeBron. I'm going to shut up, LeBron. I ain't going to ask you nothing else, LeBron. I ain't going to ask you nothing else. You don't got to look at me no more. LeBron Ray give you that look. He give you that look. The whole interview stops. The whole presser stops. Everything stops because you know that man is highly aggravated. So he's got that, that nonverbal cue to kind of sort of police the team. So him being back. Now, am I saying he's going to be a first-round pick? He's got potential if he stays healthy. If LeBron Ray can stay healthy, and that's the reason why you've got David Ballou and Dr. Matt Ray in here with the speed training, with the flexibility, with the injury prevention, with the strength training. So if LeBron Ray can stay healthy, if he can stay healthy and put on some really good tape, put in some really good production, take some pressure off Christian Barmore, take some pressure off DJ Dale, take some pressure off... Dylan Moses takes some pressure off, you know, all the guys on defense that will be rotated in and out. If Brian Ray comes back full-blooded with a vengeance, takes pressure off folks, really get after, you know, opposing teams, I can see him as a first-round pick right now. If I just had to call it, he would be more so of a potential early to mid, well, mid to late second round guy. Be it to late second round guy if I had to put a poll on it right now. But he does have the potential if he puts together a good film, good film work, and if he can stay healthy to be a first round guy. But looking forward to seeing what LeBron Ray to do this year as he is back 
to relive his money year, his junior year on the defensive line. But, folks, as always, you want the best in news, notes, information, and coverage on your Crimson Tide. This is very simple, very easy to do. You download the Touchdown Alabama Magazine app. You can get this from the iPhone App Store. If you're rocking Team Apple, Google Play Store, if you just so happen to have the Android phone for your audio listening needs, we got you for iTunes or Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, TuneIn Radio, Overcast.fm, Google Play, or iHeartRadio. If the good and gracious Lord sees fit, I shall return on Monday, continuing the conversation that is Alabama football. Until next time, folks, husbands, love your wives. Wives, appreciate, value those husbands, children. Continue to find those ways to legitimately now not be bored as some are coming in. Get those three hearty meals a day, those three great laughs a day. Protect yourself. Protect the loved ones around you. Until next time, folks, I'm your man Stephen M. Smith, and this has been In My Own Words.